been okay now. I'm glad you're here. All right, we'll call the meeting back to order. Uh, we're going to try to give some explanation of what uh, we've been talking about under the guidance of our attorney. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, county executive to begin, and then we'll move over to the attorney. If anybody has any questions, so, Mr. Barlow. Uh, so just to let the public know and everybody know uh, what we are voting on here. Uh, we were faced a lawsuit at the uh, Oldham County Justice Center. Uh, it was Hargis versus Overton County is uh, what we uh, called it here. This is the vote on the settlement. Uh, after PBI came in, found no wrongdoing, uh, multiple investigations, uh, there's 10 of the county uh, employees that are brought under a lawsuit. Uh, so, the settlement will protect the 10 employees instead of them going after each individual employee and suing this one for 500,000 or this one for 3 million or something like that. If we reach a settlement before we go to court, it would balloon all that in and we would protect our employees. And what we're voting on tonight, and if you have any more questions about this, we do have our two attorneys here that can explain more to you about this. Um, we feel that if we go to court, there is a chance, even though we think we well, have a strong case, that there is a chance that we put it off on the individual. Uh, so the vote tonight is to bring that in and try to protect our citizens, our workers, uh, that this is the ultimate goal. So they have counteracted with us, we went and uh, had a meeting with them uh, a couple weeks ago. We sat down all day long and they have came up with a number. So the vote tonight is to, if we meet that number or not. Um, do you have anything else that I'm leaving out? Vivian, Charlie? No, okay. um, have any questions? Does, yeah, does the commissioners have any questions? Any more questions? I think I explained it kind of. So the settlement's going to be for, the county portion's going to be for $1.3 million. And we've got five to eight years to pay this $1.3 million. So that is what we're going to be voting on tonight. Uh, so I guess the, the seller is going to know you're voting to take the court. Do we understand how we're going to vote? Robin, what? Um, not until we go to court. So are you talking about civilly or criminally? PBI did an investigation to determine whether there was any criminal activity on the part of the employees. There was no criminal activity to be charged with fraud. Um, of course, we have the civil litigation, which would determine whether or not civilly a jury believes that there was any wrongdoing. circumstances of it, you know, what was going on, and the, if the city arrest or didn't arrest us, that, that was the thing, he didn't arrest the individual, he was pretty much the mental patient at the hospital, and they was trying to restrain him, and the individual was trying, they, so they took him over, really didn't have a place to be able to restrain somebody, in. and uh, now the hospital does. Uh, the sheriff's departments or the jail will never take a, somebody that doesn't actually have a uh, arrest warrant against them. You know, and that's what they're that's what that's what they're contesting is he was wrong, wrongfully held. But our 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 thing was 
sheriff's department was trying to do the best thing they could. They, he was trying to poke his eye out. He was trying to kill himself. Yes, he was trying to injure himself. Yes, he, trying to himself and they were trying to restrain the individual to keep him from hurting himself. And it's, uh, life lessons are hard learned on them. And it's, uh, it, uh, the hospital couldn't handle him. And they didn't have any work for him to go. Exactly. And he was, if to let him go, he could hurt himself or hurt others. And so they asked us to hold him until they found a place for him. And that's where he came in nice, but then he was trying to kill himself. And so they were trying to help him. Chair recognizes that. I'll make a motion to resettle. No motion to go around the ball. So it's going to be back at the church. If you have questions or discussion. Well, I just want the public to, to know, too, that there was a lot of aspects of this case that was that, that the attorneys could not bring out that involved uh, our decision, too. Any other comments? Also, the city has already settled, correct? Yes. Yes, it has. All right, we have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Randall Boswell? Yes. Jesse Bowman? Yes. Geraldine Walker? Yes. Philip Talley? Yes. Lee Richards? Yes. Patrick McCurdy? Yes. Jeff Long? Yes. Bobby Melton? Yes. Shane Walker? Yes. Donna Savage? Yes. Cindy Robbins? Yes. Gail McCowan? Yes. Darwin Clark? Yes. Greg Divin? Yes. All four. Motion carried. Robin, you can take care of the rest of the board. <coughs> Number nine, consider approval to reduce the length and difficult lane by one or uh, one hundred and eighteen point four feet in this agreement between Brown versus Walker. This is a case that happened back a year or so ago, uh, where uh, two landowners got into a dispute on on the footage, so they went to court and the court settled with them there. So that's why we're gonna reduce it down to one point eight. That's what the judgment has stated in there. So uh, everybody knows we're difficult lady is just out there off of lady 84 across from Coca Cola, Cole, right in that area there. We need a motion uh, to reduce it just by that, by one eight three four four. We've got a motion by Philip Talley, second by Randall Ball. Clerk, we call the roll. Greg Gibbons? Yes. Darwin Clark? Yes. Gil McCowan? Yes. Cindy Robbins? Yes. Donna Savage? Yes. Shane Walker? Yes. Bobby Melton? Yes. Jeff Long? Yes. Patrick McCurdy? Yes. Lee Richards? Yes. Philip Talley? Yes. Geraldine Walker? Yes. Jesse Bowman? Yes. Randall Boswell? Yes. All four of them are here. All right, number 10, we're gonna, we've got a couple of folks that want to speak before we get to the, uh, the Senate approval resolution on the liquor referendum. So uh, I think, John, we've got you down first. You want to come up and address the camera. We'll give you three or four minutes. Well, first of all, thank the commission for the opportunity to come and, and to uh, make some remarks concerning this issue. Uh, the issue that I'm very strongly uh, opposed, and I have just a couple of statements I want to make tonight. So I appreciate this. Uh, as I have spoken with uh, Barlow and I've spoken with my commissioners in my district. I was told by them that the reasoning for bringing this liquor by the drink and trying to put it on referendum was because of the revenue shortfall that the county has. That trying to generate some extra revenue. And as I begin to, to look at that, I understand that even though the county over the last two years each year has had about an increase of somewhere around three million dollars uh, increase in revenue we all understand that the increase in revenue that the county has sustained is not enough to uh, overcome the shortfall of just regular inflation we all know everything costs more it costs more to do everything and when you we take it in our homes, it costs us more to bigger families to put gas in our cars. It's going to cost the sheriff more to put gas in his cars to take care of the inmates. 
We understand that. I understand that that's an issue that the county has. I also understand that uh, for many years, the commission has been very uh, diligent in trying to keep from having a property tax increase. And I appreciate that as a property owner. But I feel like we have probably got to a point where that may be the only answer to the shortfalls that we have in the county in the revenue department. Because what revenue is coming in, we're we just not having that money. I understand that. But also understand that the revenue that would be brought in by a couple of restaurants or venues in the county from the sale of liquor, which from what I've researched and found is only is a 15% of the of the income that comes in from the sale of alcohol is the tax. Half of that goes back to the state. Half of that comes to the county. And then that half has to be divided again. Half of that has to go to the schools. We're all to support the schools. The other half of that will go to the general fund of the county. It sounds like a good deal, but when you do the math, if we have a, let's say, a thousand dollars worth of sales, that's only seventy-five dollars, split in half, and then split in half. There's not that much money that's going to be going into the general fund to help the sheriff, the road superintendent, or any of the other uh, offices or, or things in the county. So to me, it looks like it's a very small trickle of funds that's going into a bucket that needs a whole lot more in it to be able to sustain the county as it is. But I believe there is a greater issue that stands before us here this evening. And it's not just the issue of revenue, but it's a moral issue. There's a moral issue that comes about when we talk about alcohol. We all know this evening that there is nothing good that ever comes from alcohol being made more accessible to the public. Right. There's no good. It never does what we're told that it's going to do. All it does is add to the problem that already exists. If this passes, if you decide to put it on the referendum and it goes to November and it passes. What that is going to end up doing is it's going to put a greater great, greater workload upon our sheriff back here and his deputies. It's going to have more roads to patrol, more DUIs to process, more problems to have to deal with. We have more possibility for automobile accidents that puts a load on the ambulance service and the volunteer fire departments that we go and we work those wrecks but the greatest burden is put upon the families of our county we know tonight that one of the leading contributors to domestic problems in the home is alcohol use. We know that though. We've seen it. I've seen it as a pastor. I've seen it as I grew up as a child and as a teenager. I understand that alcohol enhances the problems within the home. It affects husband and wife relationships. It, reflect, it affects parent and child relationships. And the people who carry the brunt of these problems is our children. It's the children that have to face the domestic problems. The children that have to be removed from their homes. The children that witness things that no child should ever have to witness. 
that's what we're contributing to when we open up and we make alcohol more accessible to the public. There's a verse in the Bible, and this is what it says. It says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and maketh him a drunk. God says, Woe unto that people. We have a moral responsibility tonight. <coughs> you as a council, you have a moral responsibility. Yes, there's a revenue problem. We all agree with that. But folks, the moral problem is far greater than a revenue problem. Why would we want to put that problem, make it more difficult for our families and our children? You tonight have an opportunity to do what's right to do the right thing, to stand and honor the words that are right there in God, that's who we trust. And if you honor God, God can honor you by bringing in revenue in the county that you never knew where it was going to be from. So look to the Lord. I heard Mr. Barlow pray a moment ago that the Lord's will would be done tonight. That's my prayer. I hope it's your prayer. I hope it's the prayer of these people out here in this audience. That's the ultimate goal. I want to honor God and honor Him by saying no. We're not going to do this. We'll find other ways to generate revenue for Oregon County. Thank you. I want to thank those who have come tonight to support this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, number 11, we got some comments from Mr. Jason. Right. Did I say your last name? Right here. Did I say your last name correctly? Yes, sure did. My name is Jason Grotter. I'm with uh, the Old Gray venue. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and thank you for your great words and uh, what you said, too. Really appreciate it. I'll make it as quick as possible. A lot of family to get home to, so I appreciate it. So I'm with the Old Gray venue, and uh, this is all how liquor could benefit. You know, the boat could benefit it's my business, or our business. And we plan on bringing in 30 to 40,000 people to our venue this year. We've got two motorcycle races, a country music festival, a two day that's put on by the largest concert promoter in the country, Live Nation, they're coming in May. Plus three or four other shows, including a rock and roll show and a contemporary Christian show that we're putting on. So what selling liquor would do for us would be able for us to make more money, more infrastructure, more better shows, um, more economic impact, more tourism impact for Overton County. And so as you're thinking about doing this, you know, maybe the citizens could have a, a say in this. You know, do they want this? Do they want more things to come to Overton County because of it? And that's all I'm asking. And I just really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so what we have to do tonight Last month, when we voted on the liquor referendum, uh, we, we got voted to take it. So, which means that if we, we're going to bring this back to the, to the back on the table, back to the agenda, we're going to have about two thirds vote. So, we're going to have to take ten votes to get it out of ten off the table. So, do I hear you? How about a question about Austin? Mr. McCurdy had said that uh, uh, to, to serve the liquor, you had to have a 51% uh, booth. Yeah, at 46. At 46. Does Old Gray have that? Do they have a. Mm -hmm. They have a. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your, 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 your primary business is food, yeah. and then the. Our primary, 71. Our primary business is events, but we sell 
we sell food. Yeah, but it's got to be 51% of your business is in food yeah. service. Yeah, that's so a, I don't think you qualify. Well, that's, a, that's a bridge we'd have to cross yeah. once we got there. And, and again, you're right, we don't know that. But that's a, you know, this to us is a, is a first step to maybe get there. Oh. Is there any other questions, Colin? Does your tax dollars come into Overton County? Because that was something we had discussed before, that it goes to Putnam County. Because no, we're, 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 we're in Overton County. Tax dollars come here. They got Overton County beer license. Yeah. We moved it. Any other comments? All right, so what we'll have to do is I'll let you take a motion to bring it. I make a motion. Back on the table. Okay. Got a motion by uh, Jesse Bowman. Got a second by Mr. McCurry, Patrick McCurry. I made a motion to leave the table. Yeah, so we got this motion first. Please. So, what we're going to vote on. Their motion is to take to bring it back up, to put it back on the agenda to be voted for. All right. It takes ten votes for it to pass. Uh, Victoria, call the roll. Greg Gibbons? No. Darwin Clark? No. Gil McCowan? No. Cindy Robbins? No. Donna Savage? No. Shane Walker? No. Robbie Melton? No. Jeff Long? No. Patrick McCurdy? Yes. Lee Richards? No. Philip Talley? No. Geraldine Walker? No. Jesse Bowman? Yes. Randall Bosley? No. All right, motion fails. It will stay tight. So that's the, we won't be able to come back up again this year. So, uh, all right, so number 13, consider approval for another large annual coffee of renewal. Skyla Harris is new. Patrick Brown is renewal. Linda Morgan, Renewal, Riley Paul, a new, Stephen Lamar, new, uh, Christine Parkhurst, new, and Sarah McLeod, renewal. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion by Randall, second by Philip. All four? Uh, All four. Motion carries, so we have to be done. All right, Ms. Shannon, you got anything for the county tonight? What would you like to talk about? Yeah, just a Thank little you. bit. Come on up.
holiday, uh, the busyness of the holiday and events that happened during that time period, it kind of got put on the back burner. So our uh, board meeting is coming up soon at the chamber. So the board, the county mayor and the city mayor will be working towards getting that council together. And hopefully we will have a list of people who are on that council for y'all next meeting as well. They, they wouldn't want me to have anything to do with it this time because they wanted me to go through it first. So I'm actually in the class this time, and then next year I'll be able to actually help with the, the whole process. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. We're down to number 15. Uh, usually we like to ask if anybody in the public has any comments about our meeting tonight. It has to be related to what's on the agenda. You've heard what we've talked about. Does anybody want to come forward and speak to or have anything to say or want to talk about anything? All right. We're glad you're here. Uh, we like seeing people here. We see how county government works, so we appreciate you all. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, the next meeting will be February the 12th, Sunday, February the 12th at 5, at 5 o'clock. So uh, everybody got that on the calendar. We, it's for so. I'll entertain a motion to, to adjourn. Jeff Long, make a motion that Robbie second. Robbie must have made a second. All for? All for, we can adjourn. Thank y'all.